So you directed episode three. I did. And it was amazing. Well, you're very kind. Thank you. I saw, I noticed it had a horror element to it. It did. And uh, sort of Cronenberg, R Ridley Scott, alien-esque. Can we expect to see more of that in the future, in future episodes? Oh, I, you know, I think the episodes all have their own tonal components that, you know, that are, uh, pro you know, that are driven by script. Um, for me, episode three was mysterious and, and threatening because I felt that Burnham's circumstance was mysterious and threatening. So I think that was the toolbox that we drew from. Um, so I think that what's great about science fiction, and by the way, great about Star Trek in particular, is under the rubric of these sort of flights of imaginative and speculative fancy, you can find other genres, right? So you can go back to the trouble with tribbles or a piece of the action, um, you know, or the Corbomite maneuver, or Naked Time. You know, you see real tonal differences, obviously sitting on the edge of forever, which we were just talking about. You know, that um, you can find the emotional tonality that is appropriate for the storytelling. That one was particularly threatening, so I felt like going to horror because uh, it was fun. Can you give us an update on production? So where are we, have you wrapped? Um... I am one day off of, I'm directing the season finale. I'm one day off of completing principal photography. We're here, we worked, some of us worked, not telling you which ones, uh, you know, uh, worked uh, la last night until 1 a.m. <laughs> Flew in this morning and uh, then it's a three-day weekend in Toronto, so and then back. And then just a question about um, episode nine. It was announced that it's moving from January to back to November. Can, is it, can you comment on that? No, I mean, uh, it's funny. We were just talking about that. It's actually just a function of how the storytelling laid out, which is the first suite. You know, CBS is sort of calling them two suites. And they're not wrong. I mean, it's an interesting, uh, uh, nothing to do with the turn of phrase, but they're not wrong. You know, there's, the, there's sort of this meta arc, which is the war with the Klingons, you know, 10 years before. Um, but within that meta arc, there are too many meta arcs that are not quite arcs or micro arcs, but they're they're overarching. And the, so the first the first sweep of those just naturally fell out in nine. So we moved it. Okay. No more or less mysterious, sadly. And then the fact that it's TVMA. Could you talk a little bit about that? Is, are, are we going to be seeing any more violence, gore, nudity? At you know, I think that this. Uh, I think that it's TVMA only because it's rated for, for that which is, you know, most, it's rated for that which is most potentially challenging, right, for a family. We're really pretty dedicated to being able to watch uh, the shows with our families. That's something that we like to do. Now, having said that, last week in the episode that I directed, you know, we had some swirled up bodies. Now, they, they were not entirely palatable to my 10-year-old daughter. So that that it's those kind of reasons, right? It's not, we're, not, we're very thrilled about the new boundaries and the, the more, uh, the broader boundaries that are offered us by streaming, but not because because we can do a lot of sex and violence, but because we can do serialized storytelling, because we can do deeper emotional stories. On occasion, if those take us into territory that feels uh, a little bit um, more risky than would typically be seen on network TV, we just stamp it. But it's always stamped for sort of the most extreme. Uh, you know, uh, this is a. Uh, it, it, it's Star Trek, and that to us means uh, you'd like to be able to have your whole family talk about it after. Okay, thank you.